Uh, I just moved to Brooklyn, right? And uh, I was afraid to move to Brooklyn at first because um, the only thing I knew about it was from rap songs. You know what I mean? Like, hey, man, we get to Brooklyn, we're going to stab you in the face. I'm like, what? Well, that don't even rhyme. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had my luggage in my suitcase as I, I was leaving outside the train station. But the neighborhood I was in had no street lights anywhere, and it was dark, and I was afraid I was gonna get killed or something like that, because I couldn't see the color of my skin. You know what I'm talking about. So, yeah, whoo! And I'm walking, and as a black dude, you're not supposed to hope for areas to be gentrified. It's against the rules, you can't do that. But the whole time I'm walking, I'm like, oh God, I hope there's a white guy jogging towards me, please. Please. And I got what I wished for, a white guy was jogging towards me. He's like, yeah, good, this must be a suburb or something. I ain't getting robbed, perfect, good. Turns out he wasn't jogging. As soon as he got to me, he was like, run, don't go that way! Run! Like, ah! <laughs> It's a trap! Right. <laughs> now it seems. This is my favorite job. I used to have a lot of terrible jobs uh, as far as like, doing comedy. I used to work fast food. I, it was terrible. Uh, bad. I used to work at Quizno Subs. Quizno was bad. It was, it was a bad job because we got robbed every night at Quizno. <laughs> yeah, and that's a good reason to hate your job, you know what I mean? Uh, the worst part about that is that we think a coworker was robbing us. Because I never robbed anybody before a day in my life, but I'm pretty sure the thief isn't supposed to have his own set of keys to get inside the store, right? And he walked in with a ski mask and a gun like, hey, hey, give me all the money in the register, Jermaine. I'm like, how you know my name? I don't, I don't have a key for the register. He's like, use my key, use my keys, oh my God. And I gave him all the money, but he was still mad. He's like, this is all we made today? And he walked away. But before he left, he clocked out. It was weird, I was like, you <laughs> He has name tag on too. His uniform. Right. <laughs> Goofy. All right. So I got that job when I was in D.C. I'm not from New York. I'm from D.C. And I uh, moved up here about two years ago. So uh, I think during Christmas, I went to go visit my, my family. And I was trying to reminisce with them. But you ever have a lot of stuff happen to you when you were a kid? Make a lot more sense now that you're older? You know what I mean? Like, oh, my God, I, was going, I know what I was going on. It's making my, oh, my God. It's making, oh, it's not that, okay, anyway. So... <laughs> I just found out that I grew up poor. I just found that out. Because uh, <laughs> when you're a kid, you don't really know you're poor. You're too young to understand what it is, you know? Like as a kid, you're like, oh, I guess going to bed hungry and cold is normal. Because <laughs> you don't know anything. But looking back, being poor was kind of cool. You know, like, oh my God, marshmallow sandwiches. Okay, okay. Oatmeal for dinner, hell yeah. And then you start getting suspicious when you go over your friend's houses, right? You go over your friend's house, like, ooh, this house is warm. This is a warm house. Yeah, Jermaine, you hungry? You got food? <laughs> we were broke, we had no money. But my parents didn't want to tell us that we were broke, so they tried to like hide it from me by playing games, and they were fun. Uh, <laughs> one, of the, one of the games they played, I remember I was coming back home from elementary school, and it's four o'clock in the afternoon, and it's December, and I go in the house, and it's dark, and none of the lights are working, I'm trying to flick them on, ain't working, and there are candles everywhere. I'm like, Ma, you in the house? I'm like, yeah, I'm in the living room. So I go to the living room, I'm like, Ma, what's up? The house, the lights ain't working. He said, like, look, Jermaine, we're gonna play a little game this winter. I'm like, ah, ah, what's the game, what's the game, what's the game? And she said, we're gonna play a game called Polar Bears. I'm like, Polar Bears? What's Polar Bears? Tell me, tell me. And she goes, Polar Bears is a game you play. We don't have enough money to pay electric bills this month. I'm like, okay, okay. But two days in, you're like, I don't wanna play Polar Bears anymore, mama. Can you play volcanoes or something hot and warm? Mm. So I would freeload over my friend Chris's house all the time, because he had what I wanted, like blankets. And I felt terrible. <laughs> I felt terrible because it gave me everything I wanted, but I couldn't offer him anything. You know what I mean? I go to Chris's house, he'd be like, hey, Jermaine, you thirsty? I'd be like, yeah, yeah, here's some juice. When I come over to my house, he'd be like, Jermaine, I'm cold. I'd be like, me too. So I couldn't help him. I'm hungry, I know, right? Right? It's like polar bears. <laughs> my dad was the worst. My dad grew up in the ghettos of DC. Like, yeah, that. Mm -hmm. I grew up in that. And, uh, he was like real militant and tough, you know, because he grew up in the ghetto. And he kind of took it out on me when I was, you know, when he disciplined me and my brothers, you know? And it made no sense half the time, you know? Like if I came back home with bad grades, my dad would take my report card and be like, Jermaine, these are bad grades. Do you want to see what happens in a bad grade in school? Do you want to see what happens? And he put me in the car and then drive me to the most dangerous areas of the neighborhood, just driving and driving. And then he stopped the car, then rolled down his window and pointed at crackheads to yell out, you want to be like that? That crackhead over there, huh? That's what happens in back lane school, man. That's what happens. The crackhead's like, what the hell is your problem, man? <laughs> but when stop there, he'd go up to bus stops, you know what I mean? Like, hey, Jermaine, this is what happens in back grade in school. You can't afford a car, like these dudes over here. 
And the crackhead's like, are you following me? What are you doing? <laughs> he was always singing around the house, my father. Because he was in church a lot. He was in the gospel choir. But he wouldn't sing songs that'd be on the radio. He'd sing songs he made up on the spot. You know what I mean? Like, just vacuum the floor. It's a stupid song. <laughs> and then he would sing when he was mad, too. Like, get back home from work. He'd be like, Jermaine, the house is dirty, Jermaine. What I tell you about why I was at work? You, you clean the house. Jermaine, I'm going to slap you in the face. And then he mixed the argument up with the singing and it sounded like a musical for some reason. Like get back home, he'd be like, Jermaine, the dishes on the sink, Jermaine. What I'll tell you about that, huh? Jermaine, please do the dishes. You'll be sleeping with the fishes. These will be my last wishes to you. I'ma turn to John Gotti and they won't find your body. Do your chores for your daddy, is that cool? But I get into it too, I'm like, Dad. I do my chores a lot, it's the one time I forgot Just please don't get me shot, don't forget So stop your singing and your pacing and your yelling and your raging But for your information, I got somebody pregnant But I'ma go to bed, bed <laughs> And then he stops and says, Jermaine, where you going? Jermaine, where you going? Don't try to change the subject because your chores ain't done yet And sorry if I'm moody, but your mama don't give me no booty <laughs> All this jealousy and envy Cause my son has more sex than me But daddy, you're the man Not when you're making love to your hands <laughs> And then he takes me downstairs Everybody's waking up So look, Jermaine I know you move on from the past But you're growing up so fast I know you got somebody knocked up And next you may get locked up Doing drugs and selling your body Your life is gonna get rowdy And a crackhead busting <laughs> Why you always talking about me? <laughs> That's my musical. Um. <laughs> yeah, weird laugh. Uh. <laughs> so, uh, my girlfriend loves that joke. She's mad at me, though. She's pissed off at me. My girlfriend says I'm not a gentleman, which is her opinion, right? Uh, but this is, why <laughs> this is why she says that. I'm walking home from a movie, and we're walking, and she takes my hand and pulls me over to the outside of the sidewalk. I'm like, baby, why you pull me over here? I look, Jermaine. A real man's supposed to walk on the outside of the sidewalk just in case a car comes, a hops the curb. It'll hit you first. <laughs> this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Because if I can't kiss you on the first date, why would I throw my body in traffic for you? Right? And she thinks the car's gonna stop at me. I'm 140 pounds. I ain't stopping metal. You know what I mean? Like, what am I doing when a car comes? Like, what? Get the hell out of here, man. <laughs> ah! Like, no. And then she's like, no, no, I do this to all my dates. Everybody protects me. I'm like, why are people trying to kill you in the first place? So the car can hit me first. Like, why should we both die? You know what I mean? Like, one of us should be able to tell the cops what happened. You know what I mean? Like, hey, huh, officer, what was that? Oh, yeah, the car hopped the curb and hit her. Yeah, yeah. Huh? How I survive? Oh, I have on Nike. She has on high heels. She really can't. I gotta go, man. Y'all been awesome. Enjoy the rest of the show.